So. Mm-hmm. Okay, welcome everybody uh, to the virtual ICM 2022, the special session on number theory. Today's speaker will be Professor Asashi Ichino from Kyoto University, and he'll be speaking about theta lifting and Langland's functoriality. Asashi, over to you. Thank you for the introduction, and I'm very honored to speak at this ICM, and I'd like to thank everyone for this opportunity. So today, I'd like to discuss the Langland functionality, which is a big subject, but originally I came from the theory of autonomous forms. So I'd like to focus on this aspect of autonomous forms. So what is Langland functionality? So Langland functionality is a relation of autonomous forms or a representation of two different groups. And to study them, so there are several methods Mm, such as trace formulas, convert theorem, and autonomous descent. And the theta lifting in the title is one of them. So what is the feature of the theta lifting? So this is limited to special cases, but it is also, uh, this is explicit and so useful, especially for application to autonomous period of, of autonomous forms, okay? So let me start with a classical example, which is discovered by Aikira and developed by, developed by Shimizu. And consider the space of cusp forms of weight k and level n, sk gamma zero n. So this space consists of holomorphic function f on the upper half plane h, such that so, uh, f is almost invariant under the action of gamma zero n. Namely, so f gamma z is equal to f z up to some factors, this one. And we also require some vanishing conditions at cusps. And this space of modular form contains a lot of arithmetic information. And to study in this information, so we need to introduce larger symmetries called Heck operators. Namely, for any positive integer n, so we can introduce, we can define uh, endomorphism Tn on this space of modular forms. And by using this operator, so we can extract some number theoretic information from the space of modular forms. On the other hand, so we can also consider a similar space of modular form attached to an indefinite quaternion division algebra B. Namely, so we can define the space of modular form SK gamma B in a similar way by replacing gamma zero n by gamma b. Here, gamma b is a group of normal elements in B cross, which can be naturally regarded as a subgroup of G to R. And this space of modular form also contains a lot of arithmetic, arithmetic information. And to study them, so you can also introduce the uh, like operators T and B. Okay, so we have now two space of modular form attached to gamma zero n and gamma b. And we now assume that uh, this space, uh, uh, this uh, n and b are related in the following way. Namely, so we assume that n is a product of even number of dis distinct primes. And b is ramified precisely, precisely at those primes. Then I here discovered that the trace of this Heke operator on the first space, but to be, to be precise, we have to take the new part of the, the first space. And the trace of the, this Heke operator on the first space is equal to the trace of uh, the Heke operator on the second space. And in this way, so we can see the relation of the two space of modular form, or the relation of the, this arithmetic information on these spaces. And this phenomenon was, developed by Shimizu in a more general setting. But after that, so actually, so this phenomenon was discovered by Aikira before Langlands. And after that, so Jackie and Langland actually, uh, studied this phenomenon in the framework of autonomic representations. In other words, so suppose that F is a number field and 
A is the ring of others of F, and consider the following two algebraic groups, G and G prime. Yeah, so we, um, let G be the multiplicative group of a cosine algebra B, and let G prime to be GL2. Then Jackie and Langlands prove that given an irreducible represent, automatic representation pi of G, uh, G, namely the B cross, so they can find the they can find some irreducible representation of GL2 pi prime, such that pi and pi prime are related in the following way. So, so remember that so G and G prime are different groups. So, but to compare the representation of the, to compare the representation of the two uh, different groups, so, so we need to be careful, but, uh, but G and G prime are actually locally isomorphic for almost all B. So, so locally, so it makes sense to comparing the representation of G and G prime. And so they require that pi and pi prime are related in such a way that they are isomorphic locally for almost all B. So that's so they get a map sending pi to pi prime. And they also show that this map is injective and they describe the image precisely. So this is a baby example of the functionality. And after this, so Langland generalized and um, proposed a conjecture of the general functionality. But I don't discuss the general case in my talk. But uh, I, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to focus on the following example, where G is a classical group and G prime is GLN. And in this case, so G and G prime are no longer isomorphic, even for almost all B. But there is a notion of the lifting of local representation sending pi b to pi b prime. And this can be described quite easily for unlimited representations in terms of Satake isomorphism. And this case of functionality has been studied for many years and by many people, such as Kokudel, Kim, Piatrick Shafiro, and Shahidi, and Ginsburg, Larry Sudi for genetic representations. And recently, as a completely established the case of functionality, uh, this case of functionality by using the formula for, for quasi split special orthogonal groups or simple groups. Okay, so the theta lifting also gives a case of functionality, but when G and G prime are a pair of, a pair of uh, certain classical groups. So, what is the theta lifting? So roughly speaking, the theta lifting is uh, a correspondence of representation given by the branching law of some small representation. But precisely, so suppose that G cross G prime can be embedded into a bigger group, ball G, and take a small representation omega of this ball G, such that its restriction becomes quite interesting, but is still under control. Then we can consider the irreducible decomposition of the restriction and the representation appearing, uh, pi tensor pi prime appearing in this restriction should determine a correspondence of representation pi and pi prime. And the ideal situation is that this correspondence becomes a graph. And actually, so this is the case for how duality in F is local, which is the following. So let G be a symplectic group over some symplectic space W over F, and let G prime be a orthogonal group of quadratic space V over F. Then if you tensor, uh, take a tensor product of W and V, then you get some simple, big symplectic space. And we can consider the big symplectic group for G, and by construction, so we can regard G equals G prime as a Sub, subgroup of um, ball G in a natural way. And there is a so-called minimal representation or very representation of this big simplex group. So this is a kind of smallest infinite dimensional representation of this simplex group. Uh, more precisely, so, so we should take the double cover of uh, this simplex group called the metaplex double cover. But I um, ignore this issue for a moment. 
So again, the how duality in the local setting has been established by how Wadzuje and Dan Takeda. And it said the following. So now we have the product of G and G prime, which is the product of S, P, W, and O, B, which can be embedded into the big simple group for G. And, and omega is the very representation of this uh, big simple big group. Then we are looking at the representation pi tensor pi prime, which appears omega as a quotient. So we are interested in this condition, and this non vanish condition of the home space determines the map from the set of representation of G to the set of representation of G prime. The point is, is that so this uh, this data is not just a correspondence but a map, and sometimes so there is no pi prime that so this non vanish condition is satisfied. But in this case, so we just send pi to zero. So this is the local uh, theta lifting, but there is a global version of the theta lifting, and it's the autonomous version of the theta lifting. Now let pi be a classical representation of GA. So this is not just a representation, but it comes with a realization in the space of autonomous form on G. And likewise, so we can realize the very representation. So omega is ordinary kind of abstract representation, but we can realize it in the space of automatic forms by using theta function. Then the theta lift of pi, which is an automatic representation of G prime, is defined as the integral transform by using the theta function as a kernel function. Maybe so if you have the set of function and the cost form, then by integration I mean, over G, then you get some uh, autonomous form on G prime. Then we consider the space of representation spanned by this autonomous forms. And the map sending this phi in the very representation f in, uh, in pi to the theta lift determines the element in the home space. This home space, but because pi is entirely, so you, you, we can move pi to the, the other side of home. So, so we get some global analog of the home space, the local home space above. So in this way, so we can use the representation sorry, to study the theta lifting. And so we know many things about this theta lifting. For example, uh, USPT, uh, non-vanishing non or USPT, uh, or what is theta pi in many cases. But to discuss the general result, um, uh, instead of discussing the general results, so let me um, give you some examples, which is the Jackie Langer correspondence again. So recall that the theta lifting constructs an autonomous representation of the orthogonal group theta pi from the autonomous representation of a simple group SPW. And suppose that W is two dimensional. And in this case, so G, the simple group is isogenous to GL2. And if B is four dimensional with trivial discriminant, then the associated orthogonal group is the product of B cross, where B is a quaternion algebra. Now take an incasular representation of G B cross. And let pi be a custodial representation of GL2, which is obtained by the Jackie Langland's correspondence from pi b. Then she has proved that the theta lifting of pi, which is a representation of b cross cross b cross, is equal to pi b tensor pi b. So in this way, the theta lifting realized the Jackie Lang correspondence. In other words, so this is another proof of the Jackie Lang correspondence. But the point is that so we can realize the Jacqueline correspondence in an explicit way. And so this is very useful for application. This realization is useful for application, especially combined with the following identities. And this identity is called the CISO identities, discovered by Kudra. And assuming that, so we now consider that uh, two pairs of classical group G cross G cross G prime and H cross H prime contain the same simple, big simple group for G. And we assume that G is contained in H and G prime contains H prime. And the situation 
can be summarized in the following uh, this picture below. This picture and here the vertical line. The vertical line means the containment, and the di diagonal line. Diagonal lines contain uh, means uh, this pair of classical group. What? And if we f is an autonomous form on G, then it says that if theta f is an autonomous form on G prime. And likewise, if f prime is an autonomous form on H prime, then it's the lift that f prime is an autonomous form on H. Then we are interested in the pairing of theta f with this to H prime against F prime. So this pairing is just a L2 pairing. So this is defined as an integral over H prime of theta f and F prime. And by substituting the definition of theta lifting, so we have the double integral, double integral over G and H prime. And by switching the order of integration, then uh, again, we use the, again, using the definition of the set, we get the uh, integral over G, which is the pairing between F and the, the set of F prime restrict to G. So the, this manipulation is very simple. But uh, this, so we can do it in the two kinds of pairing. But so this simple identity is surprisingly useful. So I'll show you examples. And suppose that B is a cosine algebra over F again. And suppose that B contains a quadratic extension K. And again, so by, let by the um, cosmetic representation B cross. And take, a, and take its Jackie Langer transfer pi to GL2. And also pick an automatic character chi on K cross, K cross, satisfying some central character condition. Then we are interested in the toric field P of F chi, which is just an integral of F and chi over K cross. So P of F chi is just a complex number. But we are interested in this complex number because of the following formula by Walt Plugge. So Walt Plugge proved that the square of this period is essentially equal to the central value of L function. So this L, func and this L half is the main term on the right hand side. And so this is the central value of the group for L function. So in this way, so this period can be related to L value and that's and so mm, this is interesting. And now that, so there are several proof of um, this formula, but originally so what it proves is use the theta lifting and the CISO identity to prove this formula. And on, from the left hand side of, of the, this CISO identity, O4 contains O2 plus O2, so we get the square of period. And on the right now, from the right hand side of C so I need the SL2, 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 so we get uh, some ranking server integral and thus um, get a central value of L function. Let me explain one more example. So again, B is a quotidian algebra over F, but now we take a three cusper representation of B cross, pi 1B, pi 2B, pi 3B. And send, it, send them to GL2 by Jackie Lang transfer to get pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. And we also assume some central character conditions. Then we can consider the trilinear period, P of F1, F2, F3, which is just an integral of the product of F1, F2, F3 over the diagonal. Then we know that the square of the period is equal to, essentially equal to the central value of the triple product L function of degree eight. So this L half is the main term on the right hand side. And so this blue, uh, this formula was proved by, by using theta lifting again, and also the CISO identity. Maybe from the left hand side of the CISO, so we have, so we have three or four, and from, from here, so we get the trilinear period, the square of trilinear period. And from the right hand, right hand side of the CISO, so we get some integral representation of the triple product of function of Garrett, Piatti, Shapiro, and Rallis. 
So I introduced two period formula. One is the toric period and the other is trilinear form period in terms in terms of the, the central value of L function. And actually, so these period formulas are a prototype of the gangloss plus conjecture, which relates the non-vanishing period to the non-vanishing L values or its refinement by Ikeda and myself. Namely, so we propose a conjectural formula of the square periods, automatic periods, in terms of in terms of the central value of L function. So okay, so there is an so there is an uh, analog of the gangloss gangloss process conjecture in the case of intergroups. Only it is for the special autonomous group, but there's an integral version. And so this version has been proved recently by using the different method um, from the theta lifting. Namely, so, so it has been proved by the other formula and by the culmination of the works of various people. Let me listen. Okay. Now I'd like to uh, explain another application of the theta lifting, which is about the modular forms of half integral weight. So recall that the modular form f on upper half plane h of weight k is a homomorphic function f, which is almost invariant under the action of some discrete sub gamma, but here is some factor appearing. Uh, so this factor, cd plus d to the k, and makes sense even when k is a half integer, as long as we choose the branch of the square root carefully. But so this thing is not so artificial, artificial. and actually so and this setting naturally appears in the number theory. For, for example, so consider the theta function, which is the infinite uh, the sum of e to the two pi n n square z. So this is a modular form so of weight half. So in this way, so there are a lot of important modular form of half integral weight, but people didn't know how to study them until Simla discovered the following result. So Simla proved that there is a map preserving L function from the set of cusp form of weight k half, namely half integral weight, to the set of uh, modular form of weight 2k. Integral weight. And in this way, so one can get the space of uh, modular form of half integral weight and modular form of integral weight. So, we can, for example, we can study, we can study modular form of half integral weight by using the modular form of integral weight or vice versa. And after pe people realize that, so the, sorry. So it is quite natural to interpret uh, this uh, result in terms of in, in the framework of autonomy representations. So modular form to half integral weight correspond to the autonomic representation of MP2, where MP2 is a metabolic double cover uh, of SL2. And this covering split of SL2, so we, at the rational point of SL2. So you, we can naturally sp uh, we can speak of the autonomic forms on this double covering. And the world project generalizes similar uh, lifting in the frame of, in the framework of automatic representation completely. So he proved that there is a map there's a been a function from the set of cusp representation of, of MP2 to the set of uh, automatic representation of PGL2. And he can also describe the image of the fiber precisely. So MP2 and PG2 are closely related to GL2. So they are very similar, but different. So this what is produced term can be regarded as a case of functionality. And so we are talking about the modular form on the half half plane, but we can also talk about the jigger modular forms of half integral weight. And for this, so we need to consider the metabolic double cover of SP2N of rank N. So, and this covering MP2N naturally split over the rational point. So we can talk about the autonomous forms on MP2N. And we are interested in the discrete, automatic discrete spectrum L2 
this go and be to n. So, namely, so we consider this interdependence. Namely, so we consider the Hilbert space of L2 function on MP2N on the speech on L2. So this is an interrepresentation of MP2N. And so we consider the discrete part, and we don't want to consider the representation which descend to the this, uh, to SP2N. So we take the genie part. And we'd like to describe this, this discrete spectrum precisely. And so this has been done in a joint work with Vitek Gun. So the result can be discovered in two steps. The first one is the course decomposition. So instead of the, so we'd like to display the irreducible decomposition eventually, but first we, we use some coarser uh, equivalent relation than the usual one. Namely, so we take the two representations, pi and pi prime, are nearly equivalent if and only if uh, they are isomorphic for all tall V. And by using this uh, equivalent relation, so we can decompose the discrete spectrum into the uh, into the sum with near equivalence classes, where each near equivalence classes is attached to some GL2N representation psi of a special form. And whatever it is, so this uh, near equivalence class consists of representation pi that is whose local component pi b is to the given uh, psi for almost all b. And in this way, special kind of psi, only special kind of psi appears in, the, in this decomposition. And what is psi? So psi has two parameters, pi i and di, and pi i is a capital representation of the smaller groups, and di is just a, di is just a positive integer. And so we take the sum of pi i with some twist, and we require some condition on pi and di, I mean, distinct, they are distinct and they must satisfy some parity condition and some size conditions. And so then we take the sum, but the sum makes sense in the space of auto representation by uh, if we use the Eisenstein series. Okay, so this is the course and the first result. And in the second result, just say that you can describe the each near equivalence class. Precisely, but only when psi is tempered. So we only we can only prove this result when so di in the previous slide is just one for all by. Anyway, but anyway, so this near near equivalent class attached to psi can be decomposed into the sum of product of local representation by eta, indexed by some eta, and how one can, uh, so what is eta? So these are just an index construct from psi. And from the local component psi, so we can define some local index set, eta b. This is just a finite set. And we can also consider some local representation pi eta v, which is an irreducible representation of the local metabolic group. And so eta is just a product of local indices. But not all eta appears in the decomposition. So the point is that the eta occurs in this decomposition if and if eta satisfies some coherence condition. Namely, from eta b, so we can associate some bunch of signs. And this bunch of signs should uh, satisfy some product formulas. Anyway, so we have uh, the decomposition of the discrete spectrum MP2N. But okay, it is fair to say that so this is an analog of the other result for some for, for quite a split of special orthogonal group or split group. And in the actually, so we use the other result. And actually, so in the case of the split SO2 n plus one, the near equivalence class, the, the decomposition into near equivalence class can be indexed by the same psi at the MP2N case. And likewise, so the near equivalent class of SO2 plus one attached to psi can be decomposed into the sum of product local representations indexed by almost same eta. 
but with the different coherent conditions. And we have some local representation by eta and sigma eta, and they are related by the local version of the sigma correspondence, which is given by the theta lifting. And I'd like to talk about it after this slide. And in this way, the theta lifting is uh, entered in the this description of the discrete spectrum of metabolic group. In any case, so we get uh, some correspondence with the presentation, but because the coherent conditions are different, so, so it's not at uh, the level of the representation, but at the level of packet of representation of MP2N and SO2 plus 1. And if N is 1, then SO3 is isomorphic to PGM2, so we can recover the theory of world project. So, what, so let me talk about the local setting. So suppose that F is a finite extension of QP. So, and in that case, so there are precisely two 2n plus one dimensional quadratic space, B plus and B minus, with trivial discriminant. Then Gan and Sabin show that the theta lifting gives a natural bijection from the set of uh, MP2n representation to the sum of the set of SOB plus and SOB minus representations. And so they also show that uh, this bijection satisfies natural properties. And once uh, one knows that so this bijection is reared by the theta lifting, then one can try to use CISO identity again to get some local period. But what is the local period? I don't know it in general, but I can I know some examples. And suppose that pi is a square integral of g, then we can attach uh, some invariant deg pi for the formal degree of pi by using the sure automatic relation. And if g is compact, and in this case pi is finite dimensional, and the measure is certainly normal, then this deg pi is just a dimension of pi. And on the left hand side, so we see an integral, integral of metric coefficient. And a metric coefficient is a kind of autonomous form. So, so we can regard this degree of pi as a local arm of autonomous field. And actually, by using the CISO identity below, so we can prove the following period relation, local period relation. Namely, so if pi and sigma is the MP2n and SO2 plus one representation, and if both are square integral, then we know the equality of these formal degrees. And so we use the form, uh, this uh, identity to prove this. But the form degree is just an invariant of representation. And why we are interested in this invariant? And this has nothing to do with the uh, number theory. But actually, we, so we try to find kind of local analog of relation between periods and L values. But, and we find that this must be the case in the case of formal degrees in a joint work with Hiraga and Ikeda. And suppose that G is reactive and pi is scan integrable. Then the degree of pi, which are invariant of just representation, should be equal to the special values of L function and epsilon function of pi. And to define L function and epsilon function, so we need some representation of the L group of G. And here, so, so we just take the adjoint representation of the L group on its real algebra. So I don't have enough time to explain the details, all the details and the results on this conjecture, but I just mentioned that so this conjecture makes sense only um, even when F is R. And in this case, so the conjecture is known by using the formula of Harish Chandra. Also, in a joint work with Rapido and Mao, we build the formal degree conjecture for MP2N and so 20 plus 1. Finally, so I'd like to discuss the another uh, application of the theta lifting, which is about the in geometric realization of the Langland functionality. 
。サポーザーと G、the group G associates are some variety X or compact similar variety X. So I don't recall the definition of this X, but whatever it is, the point, the important point is that the cohomology of X is equipped with an action of the, the G of the finite others. Well, depending on the context, it is, comes with the action of the Hecke algebra. Also, this cohomology with the C coefficient can be related to the automatic representation in the following by using the much similar formula. Namely, the, this cohomology uh, with the C coefficient is isomorphic to the sum of this thing. And this part is so H star of G infinity K infinity pi infinity is the local thing. So local is the algebra cohomology and pi F K F is also a final a local representation. But here is some global thing, M of pi. This M of pi is the multiplicity of pi, the representation in the discrete spectrum of G. And in this way, so we can describe this cohomology by using the automatic forms. And we are interested in the representation which appears in the cohomology, the similar variety. And the naive question is the following. Suppose that we have two cohomology, cohomological representations, pi1, pi2 of G1, G2. And suppose that they are related by lambda functionality. Then consider the pi as a part of the cohomology. Then can we relate, can we relate this cohomology by some geometric object? And I don't know, I don't know how to do this in general, but I can, I can give you uh, some basic example, which is uh, the Jackie Langer correspondence again. Now, let F be a total real number field. And take a cuspidal representation of GL2 pi or parallel weight two. And so we also require some simplifying conditions. And take two quaternion division algebra B1 and B2. And the crucial assumption is that this condition, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2, where sigma i is the set of infinite places where B is, B I is split. Then we can associate the similar variety to B1 and B2, x1. So we call them B, x1, x2. Then we know by assumption that the, the dimension of x and x2 are the same and equal to d, where d is the set of uh, the cardinality of the common set sigma 1 and sigma 2. And also, so we note that they are defined over the same reflex field E, which is the number field containing C. Now, so we send pi d2 to, uh, uh, to the bi, bi cross by Jackie Langer. And so we assume that so pi, uh, pi descent to pi one and pi two to be one cross and be two cross. Then consider the pi i as a part of the cohomology with q coefficient. Then we know that this cohomology is concentrated to the middle degree and is a two to the d dimensional q vector space with some structures. And what are the structures? Well, so so if you base change to C, then we get Hodge structures. And by the assumption, um, so we know that so both uh, Hodge structures are the same. And also if we, so we base change to QA, then we get the Galois representation. And by the assumption, so we know that so this, these Galois representations are isomorphic for all L. Anyway, so we have uh, abstract isomorphism of cubic spaces with structures, which structures or other representation. But these are just abstract thing, but the data conjecture plus the, the second isomorphism predicts that so this isomorphism should come from a single isomorphism of the cohomology with Q coefficient induced by some algebraic cycle Z over X1 plus X2 and the map uh, map given by the cup product. So by using cup product of Z, so we get the map from HD of X1 to the HD of X2, and then take the pi by component. So, so, 
This is known, only known by follow things when this one, namely the case when x1 and x2 are curves. But in general, in the general case, when these letters are wrong, so we don't know how to prove the existence of the algebraic cycle Z, and it looks very hard to prove. So, and we, actually we couldn't prove this, but we can okay, prove a weaker version of this uh, existence of Z. Namely, in a joint work with Kartik Prasanna, we prove that there is a hot cycle C, which gives rise to this isomorphism under some right condition on B1, B1 and B2. Namely, hot cycle means that's just a, rational, a class in the rational cohomology of X1 cross X2, which is in the GD component of the drum decomposition. And proof is actually automorphic and uh, use a CSO identity. So we have two representations pi and pi two of u2 cross u2. And so and we embed u2 cross u2 into a bigger uh, group u2 to u2 two. And put some small, small representation on u2 two. And by using the restriction to u2 cross u2, so we produce a hot cycle C. But the point is to prove the non vanishing of the period of the small representation against this U2 cross U2 representation. And to prove the non vanishing of this autumn field, we use uh, this CISO identity. Okay, so, so we prove the, this uh, weaker version of the, the existence of the uh, algebraic cycle. But so we can try to do more in this direction. For example, so we, we produced some hot cycle C for a peak. So, I mean, C is a hot, uh, C, I mean, C is a hot cycle with a natural embedding of E into C, but we don't know if this C is hot, uh, hot for any embedding E into C. Maybe so we'd like to upgrade this C to an absolute hot cycle in the sense of dream. And, also, we can try to do the same for higher rank unitary groups. Namely, so we put the U, we put some Jack Lang correspondence, correspondence on UN cross UN, and we embed UN cross UN into a bigger unitary group UN, UN, N, then put some small representation and restrict to UN cross UN, then, then try to do the same in the case of other case of two. Also, so we can um, do the same as long as we can prove the non vanishing of the period appearing. But the non vanishing of this automatic period seems to be very hard. So at the moment, we don't know how to do that. But we can try to consider other functionality, such as the endoscopic lifting from UN to UN plus one. But of course, we can also phrase it in terms of the, in terms of the automatic period. But it is still not known how to prove the non vanishing yet. Okay, so this is what I want to say. And thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you, Asashi, for a beautiful lecture on a very important subject. Uh, Asashi says that uh, if you have any questions, if you put them on Discord, then he will attempt to answer them at, after the end of this lecture. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the number theory session. Um, of this virtual ICM 2022. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye.